Welcome back. Now you can also integrate Stripe into the cloud-based service SurveyMonkey, which is designed to ask survey questions of individuals to gauge their response. At the end of the survey, if an individual feels as if they would like to purchase some of your time or consulting, you can add in a Stripe button. And to do that, what you're going to do is to go into your builder inside of SurveyMonkey. What you're going to see here is that there is an element you can add to the survey for payment. And you're going to click this Add button. That's going to give you a button here that says Connect with Stripe. So what you're going to do then is you're going to click Connect with Stripe. Once Stripe is connected, you can then customize the message that the individual is going to see. We'll then write in a description of what they're going to be paying. And once you have it, you can then click Save. You then have a form at the end of the survey that the individual can fill in in order to place their credit card number in and for you to be able to take payment through Stripe. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. In attempting to integrate third-party applications with Stripe, you may have found that their selection was limited and that those applications that you currently work with are not available with Stripe. You can connect a number of third-party applications using connector Zapier, which automates the process between third-party cloud applications. And so if you already have a Zapier account, if you log in, you can type in Stripe to find out which connections work with the payment gateway. If you don't have Zapier, you can still go into their Zap integrations so that you'll see if the applications you're working with do work with Stripe. So what we're going to do is we're going to type into the search field Stripe. And what you're going to see at the bottom is you'll see all the applications available that form an integration with Stripe. If you then type in the third-party cloud application that you currently work with, you'll be able to see how Stripe interacts. For example, we're looking at a Weber, and we have an integration where anyone that is your Stripe charge customer can become your mailing list subscriber in a Weber. So what we're going to do is we're going to select this Zap automation so that we can connect the two applications in an automated fashion. Now, if you have a Stripe connection through the API, what you'll be able to do is you'll be able to connect a trigger, which is a new Stripe charge. And we're then going to click continue. If you don't have a Stripe account, you'll need to connect your Stripe account. You'll click connect an account. That's going to open up this pop-up dialog. Now, if you don't have pop-ups enabled, you will want to enable them so that you will get this pop-up, which will ask you for your API key. And what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to go to your Stripe account to get your API key. One thing to note is that there's only space here for one key. So that means that you'll need the secret key and the live variant. Once your account is connected, you'll then click the test button. You'll verify that your Stripe account is working. Then you'll click save and continue. What you'll then do, what you'll then do is verify and test with one charge. So what we're going to do is we're going to use this first charge. And this will help Zapier to verify that your account is working. Now what we're going to do is make the connection. So what we want to do is to create a subscriber every time there is a Stripe charge. So we're going to click continue. Now we already have our Aweber account connected. If we didn't, we'd need to connect our Aweber account. We're going to click test. That's successful. We'll then click save and continue. Now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to verify some information so that our connection will work. Once we do that, we'll then click continue. We then want to send a test to Aweber. So what we're going to do is to click this blue button. Aweber will then verify that our test has been successful. We'll then click Finish. Once we do that, our Zap is turned on. And then every time we have a Stripe charge, that individual will then be added to our Aweber account. Now, this is one example of the kind of connection that you can do with Zapier. Each Zap is going to work differently, and each verification process will work differently. However, the result is going to be the same. It's going to be an automated connection that will be invisible to your customer, but yet give you the information and connection that you want. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, in the first part of our live example, we're going to start by creating a product 
inside of our Stripe account. And if you go to the products area, what you're going to do is you're going to click this button that says new. We're going to create the product name and we're going to decide that it's going to be a one-time purchase product. We're going to work in our currency and then we're going to decide an amount. What we're then going to do is we're going to place an image inside of this area. Now as an aside, there is a size limitation on the image that you can place in this area even though it is optional. Once you've done that, you can then click Done. Now if you want to create and sell a variation of the product, you can add a different SKU. In this case, we can click Add SKU and we're going to give this a different name. Once we've done that, we're then going to click Create SKU. So now our product is ready to sell and what we'll need to do is we'll need an interface to be able to sell it. Now if you do understand code, you can use Stripe Checkout in order to place the code on your website. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now one of the ways that we can configure our product to be sold is to use one of the affiliate networks. And we are now inside of JVZoo which we have configured now to take Stripe and is now connected to our account. And so what we'll need to do is we'll need to create the product inside of JVZoo. Now even though that product is already created inside of Stripe, we will need to have it created in JVZoo for their tracking purposes also. And so inside of the product creation screen, we are going to need to make sure that our payment options reflect that we want to be paid through Stripe when the individual buys through the JVZoo buy button. So we're going to click this button, then we're going to save our product. We're then going to need to get our buy buttons from JVZoo. That means then that we'll need to go into the action setting, then we'll need to click on the buy button, then what we'll need to do is we'll need to scroll down and we'll need to get the code and then we'll need to head over to our website. We'll then need to place that HTML code on our page or inside of our page builder. In this case, we're pasting the code inside of a page builder. And we're now going to click Insert. And you'll see now that our button is then active and then when the individual clicks on it to buy our product, they will be purchasing through Stripe. Now the product tracking will happen inside of JVZoo. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, we're going to assume that one of the customers that bought our product decided that they wanted us to work with them individually. And so, as a result, they will be purchasing services from us. And so, to start the process, what we're going to do is we're going to invoice that customer. And to do that, we're going to scroll down inside of the customer area and then we're going to activate the particular customer that we're going to be working with. We may want to add a note that this is going to be a customer that we're working with individually. And then we'll click Add Note. What we're then going to do is to come down into the Invoice section and click Create Invoice. We're then going to write in information about the services that this individual will be purchasing. So what we have here are four units of our services and then another fixed pricing on our services. We're now going to write in a memo so that we understand what these services mean and so that the customer actually sees this memo. Once we have our memo written, we'll then scroll down. And what we're going to do is we're going to choose to email the invoice for the customer to pay manually. And we're going to say that this invoice is going to be due two days after the invoice is sent. We're then going to send that customer a link. We're going to give them the opportunity to pay but only with credit card. Once we've done that we're going to preview our invoice and if we like the way our invoice looks we're going to close it. We're then going to send the invoice and our invoice is now sent to our customer. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, if you are doing an event with cloud-based app Eventbrite, you can then set up an automation that will allow you to set up coaching clients. So, for example, 
we can set up a trigger so that when someone becomes a new attendee registered, we can then set up so that they become a customer inside of Stripe. What we're going to do now is we're going to click make a zap. So the first thing we're going to need to do is to connect an account. We're then going to allow Eventbrite to be connected to our Zapier account. We'll then click the test button and then we'll click save and continue. Once we enter the appropriate information about our event into Eventbrite, we'll then click continue. We'll then pick a sample to set up our Zap. We'll then choose the action application, which is going to be Stripe. And what we want to do is we want to create a new customer inside of Stripe when we have an attendee registered in our Eventbrite event. So what we'll then do is we'll pull in the email address. We'll then make sure a description is written in. We'll then send the test customer to Stripe. Once we do that, we'll then click Finish. We'll then give our Zap a name, and then we'll turn our automated system on. And what we now have is we now have customers inside of our Stripe database that we can invoice at our live event. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, while at our live event, assuming that we want to capture a payment for individuals while there, we can choose any of the mobile applications that we've discussed in order to charge them for a purchase of products or services. We're going to click on the Pay Now application. We're going to authenticate. And then you'll notice that we have our charge available to us. What we'll need to do then is we'll need to email the individual for a receipt. And in this case, we'll use that customer email. In the case of the charge application, we'll be able to place the name and email address of the individual inside of the charge. In the case of the payment application, what we'll be able to do is we'll be able to assign a specific product. We'll then be able to assign that product to a specific customer. And then we'll be able to enter the customer's card number so that they make the purchase through Stripe. Now, as is the case with any application you use, you do want to make sure that you do your personal due diligence so that you know which app is going to be safe for your mobile device and that it fits well with your business. The three that we've looked at in this video are actually three apps of many applications that you can use in association with Stripe. So find the one that's safest for you and then find the one that fits the best with what you may be trying to do at a live event. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one thing you can do is to integrate Stripe with your autoresponder so that every purchase made through Stripe, you can have a person added to your email marketing list. So to do that, you are going to need to use Zapier. And so what we're going to do is we're going to first write in Stripe. Then we're also going to choose our autoresponder. And we see now that we have a Zap available to us. We can add new customers to get response when they purchase with Stripe. So what we're going to do is we're going to click Connect Stripe and Get Response. So what we want the trigger to be is when there is a new charge. So we're going to click that link and click Save and Continue. We're then going to send the test to our Stripe account. Once we verify that it's been successful, we're then going to click Save and Continue. We are not going to include the failed charges. And we're going to click Continue. We're going to need a sample charge to set up the Zap. And then we're going to connect to our GetResponse account. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a contact when there is a purchase. And once we've connected our GetResponse account, what we're going to do is we're going to select a specific list and then we're going to set up the rest of the identifying information. We're then going to send the test to get response. Once we verify that our test has been sent, we're then going to click finish. We're then going to name the connection. Once we do that, we're then going to turn our zap on. And what we've done now is so that whenever there is a purchase inside of our Stripe account, 
that person is then going to be added to our email marketing list. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now, one of the other things that you may want to do is when there is a purchase in your Stripe account, you may want to have the individuals added to a webinar so that you might be able to either record a counseling session or create one-on-one -on -one training. And you can create that automated integration in Zapier. So what you're going to do first is you're going to start with an app. And naturally, first, you're going to start with Stripe. Now, you can also then connect Stripe to your GoToWebinar account. Or in some cases, it may even be more appropriate to connect to GoToMeeting. If you use Zoom and not GoToWebinar, you can also connect Stripe to your Zoom account. In this case, we're going to connect Stripe to our GoToMeeting so that when there is a new charge created, we want to have a meeting created inside of GoToMeeting. And then we want to connect those two applications. So what we'll first do is we will then connect our Stripe account. We will not then include failed charges and then continue. We'll use the test charge for Stripe and then we'll connect GoToMeeting. We'll then click GoToMeeting to create a meeting. We'll then need to connect our GoToMeeting account. We'll then test our connection to GoToMeeting. Once it is successful, we'll then click Save and Continue. Once we've added our information to the template, we will then click Continue. We'll then send our test to GoToMeeting. And once our test is complete, we can then click Finish. We'll then name our integration. And then we'll turn on our automation. And so now what we've done is that every charge that comes through our Stripe account, we will then have that person added automatically to a GoToMeeting where we can set up a counseling session. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another. In conclusion, we've now walked through a number of practical examples of how you use Stripe in combination with certain third-party applications, as well as the kinds of basic functions you may encounter in your business every day. We've been able to work through, we've been able to bypass the limitations of Stripe's integrations by using third-party application Zapier. We've also looked at plugins connected to WordPress. That's important to note that if you're working with the integrations on the Stripe website, or whether you're looking at some of those mentioned in this course or some of those connected by Zapier, you must do your due diligence to make sure that the application you're using is going to be safe with respect to your business. It's also important to note that you are working with the sensitive payment information of your customers. And as a result, you'll need to make sure that you're taking every precaution to make sure that privacy is protected. So as you start to determine which applications are going to be best, make sure to take into account user reviews as well as business fit. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I'll see you either in another video or in another course.